Hey guys, Codename Rosa here, and today I'll be continuing my character design analysis on Marius. Check out the first part if you're interested in useless obsessive knowledge about fictional characters and haven't watched it already. Quick disclaimer. Spoiler warning for all Marius-related things mentioned so far in the global server. That includes card stories, main story, and personal story. I'm not in the other server, and I don't follow what happens there. Please don't spoil it for me and others in the comments, even if I say something that becomes very obviously right or wrong later on in the story. Pretty much all of my research was done on Google, scanning obscure and sketchy websites for oddly specific information. The theories in this video are all speculation, with very little evidence to back them up, so let's take them with a grain of salt and obsession. Now, without further ado. It's time to take a look at three major theories I've gathered from the internet, and my own mind. Before jumping in, I'll let you know two major things about the statue of Themis. The snake under her foot represents evil and lies, and the book is the law, the constitution from which justice is administered. For the most part. There are, of course, a couple little ways these definitions were bent throughout the years of their history, but I'd say these are the most easily recognized. Okay, bring out the theories. In traditional representations, we see Themis stepping onto a snake. The obvious symbolism is the snake being a general symbol of evil, and justice triumphs over injustice, corruption, bias, and intimidation. Our Themis, however, is not stepping on the snake. Instead, we see it alive and looking at her as if wanting to bite her at any time. Justice has not triumphed in this case. As a snake, we have Marius. Here, he's not looking at Themis. Instead, he's at a distance, looking quite bored or deep in thought, as if his job is done. He's the only one not interacting with the main character, Themis. So, Marius is the snake. Good theory. That's clearly the first thing we think of when we see his position in this art. He's got breakup friend zone roses, he's the second most suspicious boy in the cast, and he's got some odd snake and dragon jewelry that has pretty scary symbolism, possibly. Sadly, this has the most concrete evidence out of all the theories I've seen. Next up. Marius wears an Ouroboros on his neck. True, the snake eating its own tail is a symbol of eternity and inevitability, but it is his right hand that shows us his true intent. A golden snake wrapped around his wrist and hand, dripping down and held at a safe distance from the main character. He is drenched in the symbology of courageous wisdom, of the importance of being cautious, not fearful, and he has placed himself as a willing sacrifice to the symbol of evil, so that it doesn't even get a chance to be seen by the main character, let alone attack her. The snake, however, is of gold, a display of ostentatious wealth, and a sign that Marius hides his noble actions behind a smokescreen of playboy aesthetic. It is a misdirection, the dazzle of wealth used to distract the viewer from his suffering in silence, his struggles hidden from those around him. And yet he holds the snake, his eyes fixed upon it, intent on protecting the main character at a cost only to himself. With such a strong focus on the snake, Marius is someone who doesn't wish to burden others, to the extent he is content to damage himself, hiding that alongside everything else. He is also willing to be perceived in a negative light, and has a tendency to see himself as a snake rather than the one who is keeping the snakes at bay. He is a difficult man to unravel, and may appear to have a shifting personality. Ultimately, however, he is a noble soul with a good heart. So here's the opposite of the last theory. It's entirely based off of the assumption that he's holding the upside down snake to keep it away from the main character, but it's such a sweet and sad idea that I'm not going to write it off as impossible. It's wishful thinking. Besides, we see evidence of the effect of this throughout his story. He does hide his nobleness with a facade, and he's shown to be dealing with snakes often, normally using his facade to do so. It's got a lot of abstract evidence. Now for the last one. The snake from the Sister of Justitia, Prudentia, represents courageous wisdom and the importance of overcoming judgments made from fear rather than caution. Marius could be seen as the snake in this light, However, we'd then still be missing representation of the books on which Thema stands. With a snake visible on Marius already, let's consider the fact that he could be representing the books. The books symbolize the constitution from which our justice system was born, the law, if you will. It's Themis' foothold and the basis of her judgment. We can see clearly, though, that Marius is not supporting the main character. He is on his own, wrapped in snakes and dragons, and possibly unconcerned with the main character's predicament, considering how he is not looking towards her. 
Could he be taking the law into his own hands and leaving Lady Justice without her foundation? We know he doesn't like to include the main character in his methods of dealing with certain situations, and although they haven't been shown to be dipping into the evil or shady categories as of yet, that does show that he believes his own judgment to be superior on occasion. Let's take a step back and return to the snake jewelry. His right hand seems to be trapped by chains, whose main feature is the rod of Asclepius. In most circumstances that would be fine, considering the rod symbolizes medicine and healing. However, this rod is upside down. It was clearly made that way, since if it's a necklace of some sort, they would have designed the snake coiling upwards. Taking that into account, we can possibly gather that his hand is wrapped in poison and death. It's plated in gold too, possibly implying that it is his wealth that's trapping him in this pain. But with all the power and influence giving him grief, it's only inhibiting one hand. His other can still act to undo what his evil hand has done. Here we introduce the Ouroboros ring necklace. What does it represent? Eternal cyclic renewal, cycle of life, death, and rebirth. With his free hand constantly having to counteract his trapped hand, we have a cycle. Now the creature biting its tail is a Jiao Long, a Chinese dragon, and the symbolism is officially stated as a sign of Marius' family rising above hardships. White dragons also have been known to represent purity and rebirth. Using that information, we can take this as confirmation that Marius himself is pure and that he overcomes these issues each time the cycle comes around. In conclusion, we see he has good intentions trying to undo the evil around him, possibly at the cost of himself to some degree, considering the white dragon also represents death and mourning in some cultures. But his methods could be harmful to the judgment of Themis. We also seem to still have the issue of the snake shown attacking Themis in the statue. Perhaps Marius isn't doing as good a job as he originally thought. Is that why, when we follow his line of sight, he seems to be glancing at the Sword of Judgment? Is he considering fully taking control of the situation? Well folks, not gonna lie, I made that one. Not to say that's what I really think, my personal favorite is the he's sacrificing everything and suffering in silence theory, but I was just coming up with another possibility. To spoil future discussions, I do believe that all four of the boys are hindering Themis' judgment in some way, so I don't think he's fully innocent. But I also don't think he's evil. Again though, I wouldn't mind if he ends up breaking my heart. If he's a snake through and through, guess that's the way things are. Kinda love him anyway. And now for our final section. The enigmatic opening cutscene. I'm only going to focus on the Marius section, as he is our main topic, and in this section there are only two main points of interest. The painting, and Vin's comment. Let's begin with that painting of the main character. We know that Marius considers you his muse and has made many sketches and paintings of you, so we're not surprised that he's found creating one in the opening. I'll mention here that this painting most likely is or will become a physical object in the game. It doesn't just exist in this cutscene. I assume because we know Luke's box exists. What catches our attention first is the fact that it's covered in some kind of plaster. Without touching it, some falls off and you start to see the painting beneath. Curious, you scratch off the rest of it. I believe this could represent the mask that Marius wears being slowly removed the more intimate your relationship with him becomes. Once his mask is fully removed inside, all he finds is you. We've seen that Mihoyo likes to use flowers to symbolize things. So let's look into the flowers you're seen with in the painting. First, you're holding pink lilacs. Another color that is typical for the lilac flower is pink. A pink lilac flower is a symbol of friendship and love. Pink lilacs symbolize love, much like most flowers, but they can also have that extra meaning of friendship, yet another hint to the friend zone. The other flowers are found in the main character's hair, and it took a lot to figure out what they might be. I finally settled on the dog rose. The rose refers to pain as it was believed the medicinal properties of the plant were used to cure the bite of rabid dogs in the 18th and 19th centuries, before sophisticated medicines were discovered. The positive meaning, pleasure, stemmed from its focus around romanticism. In medieval times, this rose was placed at the end of a maiden's bed to signify a king's interest in her company. Why, isn't that just the perfect example of the relationship? The pleasure of your love, but the pain that we see hinted at through various things. It's further emphasized when your vision blurs and refocuses, and you find the painting crying. I won't linger on this, as most of it was already covered but I will point out that you seem to have a purple heart on your choker. Lastly, we have Vin's cryptic comment when you awake in his office. 
At least I assume that's where we are. Using a painting to conceal the truth? Perhaps you can fool the eyes, but not the heart. This has so much weight to it. I can't. Okay, so I'll list a few questions. Was the painting gifted to you, or did he keep this one for himself? Which symbolism of the flowers was he thinking of as he made it? Was he thinking of both? At what point did he paint it? Was it before or after your inevitable friend zoning? Who's concealing the truth from the eyes in this painting? Whose heart isn't deceived? Why the heck does Vin have access to this painting? A story I can imagine is this. You had been with Marius for a while, and your relationship has become more official. However, conflicts with Pax have grown more severe. Marius works hard to keep the media away from you, but issues keep cropping up and things become more difficult. Eventually, Marius comes to a decision and approaches you. He declares that it would never work between us, and asks to just remain friends. To shield yourself, you pretend as if you've never seen him as more than a friend. You both go your separate ways, pretending you never had deep feelings for each other. Marius returns to his studio. He hasn't been able to do that in so long due to all the work he's had to deal with. This time, he feels a heavier burden on his heart than he usually does. As he begins to paint, he finds himself shaping your form. You become more clear as time passes, and the heaviness in his heart becomes crushing. You are alone in your room taking off your makeup, trying to distract yourself but his words keep playing in your mind. A tear starts to form in the corner of your eye, but you furrow your brow and hold it back. Instead of thinking about today, you begin to think back on past experiences with him. How angry he made you feel with his teasing, his annoying attitude, and how he never seemed to have a care in the world. The times he made decisions without your consent. You think back on those times, but you find you can't stay angry. You remember the exhaustion on his face when he thought you weren't looking. The sparkle in his eyes when you scolded him. The joy in his smile during those moments of silence where both of you just understood. The tear rolls down your cheek. You can't stop it now. You were always friends, but at some point, something buried began to surface. It was never truly spoken, but did it ever need to be? Marius steps back from his finished painting. It's a masterpiece, but sadness fills his eyes as he stares at her face. She looked happy. She would be happy without him. She had said they were always just friends. He would be fine. He would be able to move on. No one could ever truly know me anyway. All lies. He always lied to protect others, but now he's trying to protect himself. In a desperate attempt to mask his sorrow, Marius covers the painting in plaster. He couldn't stand to see her smiling eyes anymore. Even if a painting could conceal the truth from the eyes, it could never deceive the heart. Sorry, the writer in me started acting up, but anyways, that's the end of this character design analysis. From Playboy to Sacrificial Boy. I can't wait to see what Mihoyo does with his character, and I'm sure I'll be thrilled with whatever it may be. Rosa signing out. Dang, Marius would be so happy if he heard me gushing over him like this for the past... Wow, that was a long time. <laughs>